We're going to talk now to one of the Democrats who's already won a seat in the deepest of red states, Senator Doug Jones of Alabama. Senator Jones, thank you for joining us this morning. Happy Easter to you. You, you did succeed back in December in that special election. What is your message for the Democrats as they approach these midterms? Well, George, first of all, thanks for having me this morning. I really appreciate it, and happy Easter to you and, and to all the folks out in, in uh, your viewing audience. Um, I, I think the message uh, that I had in my race, and I think Connor Lamb had in his race, I think Governor Northam had in Virginia, is that you have to talk directly to people. Uh, and you have to talk about issues that mean very much to them on a daily basis. And it's not just talking. You have to listen. I think that has been one of the biggest problems uh, that the Democrats have had over the years is that there's a perception that we just don't hear, uh, that we do the things that we want to do and we don't hear and we don't listen. And I think that combination of having those dialogues that we talked about so much in my campaign rather than just monologues is very important uh, going forward into 2018. Does it also mean not just opposing President Trump but finding places where Democrats can work with him? Oh, I don't think there's any question about it. You know, George, last night I was at a play and a lady came up to me afterwards. We were leaving and she said, I didn't vote for you. I voted for the Republican. But I want you to tell everyone uh, they need to work together. That's a message for Republicans and Democrats. She made a point of saying that to me. And I think that there's a lot of that out there, not just in Alabama, but from across the country. People wanted to maybe see the chaos. I heard the roundtable talking about that with the president's election. But at the end of the day, they want to see people working together and to get things done. That's the only only way we can progress. Uh, it's the only way we can get some, some serious-minded legislation going through Congress. You see a pretty deep division in the Democratic Party now, playing out in primaries, though, all across uh, the country, you know, for want of a better word, between somewhat establishment, more moderate Democrats, and, and those from the progressive wing of the party, who some Democrats say may have energy in a primary but don't have what it takes to win in a general election. Well, I think that there is some truth to that. We have seen uh, some divisions, but you know, there's always been divisions in the Republican Party with the Democratic Party. I think the challenge for Democrats is to make sure that we have those open primaries, that we, we contest those primaries the way anybody with passion wants to do it. But at the end of the day, we rally around because we've got a common goal, and the common goal is the people of this country, uh, the people in our respective districts and states. So I think the challenge is as we go forward, we're going to be trying to challenge in every zip code in every state. I think Tom Perez's uh, I Will Vote uh, program is really going to, to have some major impact around here. But the fact of the matter is, at the end of those primaries, we've got to make sure that we sit down and we start rallying around together to make sure those issues are taken straight to uh, the November elections. You also had a message for Democrats this week on the floor of the Senate on guns. Let's listen. You can't simply demonize the NRA and pro-gun groups. Well, I know that these groups sometimes take what many, including me, consider extreme positions. They also represent millions of law-abiding gun owners who are concerned that their right to bear arms are at risk. So, so what's your message, Senator, to those Parkland students, everyone we saw march uh, last week in Washington and around the country, who say, who, who say that simply the NRA has had a stranglehold on the Senate, on the House, and they prevented even those common sense measures, the kinds that you were just mentioning. Well, I think there is some, uh, some truth to that. I think that's true in the Senate, it's true in the House. But the fact of the matter is, if we want to do something, we've got to put those, that kind of rhetoric aside. I, I supported those kids for there. I had one of them in the audience, uh, you know, in the gallery, uh, watching that speech that I had just met earlier that morning. And I support that. But the fact of the matter is, in order to legislate, in order to do things and get things done, you've got to put some of, of the far right, the far left rhetoric aside. Uh, and the fact is that the NRA does uh, represent a lot of millions. Americans who are concerned about that infringement on their Second Amendment. At the same time, those Parkland students and the other millions of, uh, of kids around the country also represent a point of view that we have to do something, not just about school safety, but about gun violence and trying to stem the tide of gun deaths in this country. So what does that mean right now? Well, we took a step, I think, George, in the uh, uh, budget uh, the other day. We had the Fix NICS program. We also uh, cleared up the fact that the CDC can start, in a, you know, kind of uh, doing some investigation and studies about gun violence. Uh, those are small steps, but they're important steps. I think we can look and find that common ground. We can find, we can do more on background checks. 
I'd still like to see the age limit for uh, pistols, which has been the uh, 21 for many years, uh, in, expanded to include uh, semi-automatic weapons. We can have those kind of dialogues, and I think that background checks, closing the boyfriend loophole, those are things that ought to be bipartisan issues uh, that I think that, by and large, the vast majority of Americans support. Your colleague, Senator Mark Warner of Virginia, has now come around to the idea we have to try again on the assault weapons ban. Can you go that far? I'm not sure I can go that far just yet, uh, go, George. Uh, we've got to get done what I think can be done right now. Let's reach, reach across and within our own party to do those things that we can do. Uh, and that, that, to me, is where I want to focus. I really don't believe that a gun ban is feasible right now. And I think that there are things that can be done that we need to look at. And I think I outlined most of those uh, in my speech on the floor uh, last week. I'd like to get you to weigh in on a couple of these cabinet issues facing President Trump right now, starting with his nominee uh, for the VA, Dr. Ronnie Jackson. Uh, do you have questions about his nomination? Is he someone you can support? Well, I, you've got questions only because of the, the lack of experience. But I think, as you, uh, they talked about in the roundtable, there's a lot about him that uh, is not known. And, and I think that the job of the White House now is to put all the information out there. He'll go through a full vetting. I don't think anyone should say one way or another right now because he is such an unknown, whether you'll support him or not support him. I think that uh, once we get into the background checks and the hearings, I think all that will come out and we'll see. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt because he is a presidential nominee. But we'll see how that shakes out. How about Scott Pruitt at EPA? Does he have to go? I think he's in real trouble. I think that there is a, uh, the perception is not good at all. Uh, the fact that uh, he has uh, been, had a controversy with expenses, which I think is one of the things that people are just frustrated with, with cabinet members who seem to want to use taxpayer dollars uh, to fund a life, their own personal lifestyle. Uh, and now on top of this, the, 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 you know, not just the, the $50, but the fact that it was going to uh, energy company lobbyists, it, that's, it, it just looks so bad, and I think it seems that, that he may be on his way out. Okay, Senator Jones, thanks very much for your time this morning. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.